Super Mario Odyssey is some of the greatest levels ever designed. From the streets of New Donk City to the machinery and wooded, Mario Odyssey's kingdoms are just extraordinarily fun to explore. Combining that with Mario's perfect movement and controls gives you an incredibly fun masterpiece to roam around in. However, while I do love most kingdoms in this game, I can't say the same about Shiveria, otherwise known as the Snow Kingdom. While I do think that there are still some worse than it, I mean, come on, Cloud is right there, I definitely think that Snow is pretty mediocre for an Odyssey Kingdom. It seems that most people also agree with me that it's just sort of a lackluster level, especially for this game's standards. Today, in this first episode of my brand new level analysis series, I want to go over why I think that is and why so many people feel this way about the Snow Kingdom. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, but with that out of the way, let's jump right into why I believe Shiveria is Mario Odyssey's most mediocre kingdom. First of all, let's go ahead and talk about what type of kingdom Shiveria is. In Mario Odyssey, there are three types, large, medium, and small. The easiest way to tell which of these a kingdom falls into is the amount of purple coins it has. If it has 100 purple coins, then it's a large kingdom, so this would include Sand, Wooded, Metro, Seaside, Luncheon, Bowser's, and the Mushroom Kingdom. These also generally have much more moons than the other kingdoms, along with just being physically bigger as well. The small kingdoms contain no purple coins, which includes Cloud, Ruined, Dark Side, and Darker Side. As opposed to the large kingdoms, these generally have much less moons than normal. The final category is our middle group, the medium-sized kingdoms. These all have 50 purple coins instead of 100. This group consists of Cap, Cascade, Lake, Lost, Moon, and of course our topic for today, the Snow Kingdom. So as we can see right off the bat, Snow is already at a bit of a disadvantage. Sure, it's not in the Small Kingdoms category, but being in the middle still isn't great for it. Generally, people, such as myself, enjoy kingdoms with much more content. Since Snow is in the middle group, it means that it has less content already, which is a downside. It does contain 55 moons in total, which is solid enough, in fact that's actually the most amount of moons from any of the medium sized kingdoms, but it's just not as much as the large kingdoms with totals in the 60s or even high 80s. Most people's favorites are from the large list, like Metro or Wooded. Just being in the middle group though is far from a death sentence. Cascade and Lost are very well loved in the community, despite not being as big as some of the others in the game. Still though, even ignoring the large kingdoms, Snow is pretty weak in comparison to the other middle-sized ones. My point here is that just starting off, based on what type of kingdom it is, it's already on the lower end. However, we've seen this format succeed in other kingdoms in the same style, so we know that what Shiveria actually contains is the issue here. With that said, let's actually jump into that and see what this kingdom contains, with its general looks and aesthetic. Odyssey's kingdoms are in general very creative and do a great job at breaking away from Mario norms. In traditional Mario games, you generally go through a grass world, desert world, snow world, beach world, forest world, sky world, and end in a lava world. Odyssey changes that formula by adding in a lot of different level types that we haven't seen before like Metro Kingdom, but it also changes these existing norms to be extremely unique. I think the best example of this is the Wooded Kingdom. On the surface, it's pretty obvious that this is Mario Odyssey's forest world. However, instead of just sticking to be a generic forest like most Mario games, they add a bunch of different things to make it unique. The main thing is of course fusing this forest with technology. This not only makes the level's layout more fun, but it also gives this its own unique style compared to all the other forest levels in previous Mario games. No other forest world before this is combined with technology like it is here. Making it orange also gives this kingdom a very unique look. All in all, this makes Wooded, while still technically a Mario trope, an extremely unique take on this to the point that it doesn't feel like it's been repeated before in a different game. Plus, its incredible main track, which is one of the best in the Mario series, and the Deep Woods really help sell how unique Odyssey's rendition of a forest world is. All other kingdoms that fit these tropes are also changed so that they feel very unique. All of them, except for Snow. Just look at the outside here. Nothing about this looks unique. This is exactly what I would imagine a snow level to look like, which is not a good thing. What it is a great subversion of expectations as you enter into the technology portion of the level, while at least on the outside, snow is exactly what you would expect. The colors are just basic snow, white, and ice blue. Nothing here looks much different from other 3D Mario snow levels. This is pretty much what I would expect levels like Snowman's Land to look like in HD. They even both have the frozen water that hurts you. This leads to the outside section of the Snow Kingdom to be one of the most underwhelming in the whole game. However, there is still an interior part which does a better job of being unique. Still though, the colors here are just about what you would expect for some sort of snow town, and only about half of the moons take place here, so the rest of the time you'll be at the boring surface. I'll go more into the town itself in a little bit, but overall, when it comes to aesthetic, color scheme, and idea, the Snow Kingdom just isn't as unique as the other kingdoms in Odyssey. Again, except for Cloud. Cloud is worse, don't get me wrong here. But Snow just looks kinda stale and boring as well. 
So far the Snow Kingdom's size and looks have been pretty mediocre, but what about the design of the stage itself? Like before, I'll start with the outside and then move on to the inside. Of the two, the outside is easily the worst part of the kingdom. The first major issue here is that it's surrounded by walls on all sides. This is the only kingdom besides the Lake Kingdom to do this. Having walls surrounding everything makes the kingdom feel much more small and isolated, which is generally not something you want to do. Most kingdoms just have a void surrounding it, which makes it feel much more open to exploration. On top of that, this area is so small that you're always able to see the ends of the kingdom from anywhere you stand in it. This again helps produce a feeling of isolation, and a feeling that there aren't really many places to go. The wall and shape of the kingdom also mean that it's kind of hard to remember where everything is placed since all parts of the wall look exactly the same. The Lake Kingdom also has these walls, however its shape is much more unique than the simple circle that the Snow Kingdom is, meaning moons are much easier to remember where they belong. If you showed me a map of the Snow Kingdom, I'd have a hard time trying to tell you where, say, the Captain Toad Moon or the Notes Moon is located. If I were to make one change to the Snow Kingdom, it would probably be to remove these walls. They just do nothing but make the level feel even more isolated, small, and boring. That was only the first problem with the outside, though. Another is a lack of elevation. Pretty much every kingdom in Odyssey has a high point to reach. New Donk City has the main hall, Wooded has the observation deck, Sand has the inverted pyramid, etc. Having these in the kingdom gives Mario something rewarding to go explore. Mario Odyssey is of course a sandbox and platforming game, and generally these landmarks require some platforming to get up. These tall areas are nice ways to lead players to different landmarks, as generally scaling tall things in games is pretty fun. Pretty much every kingdom's highest point has moons to reward the player as well, so all in all, having these tall areas can provide for some fun things to explore and climb up. This leads us back to the Snow Kingdom, and the only real point of elevation is where you start the kingdom. This means that you're going down instead of up, which isn't as fun generally, as you can just jump off. Still though, jumping off tall things can be fun. Rolling off the inverted pyramid in sand can be a lot of fun. But that's only because you're <coughs> really high up. This platform in snow isn't really that high above the ground, so falling down it isn't as fun as it could be. This platform is quite small and skinny as well, meaning that there really isn't much to explore here. Heck, even climbing back up the thing is boring as all it takes is one gust of wind from these posts. There are a few other spots that are slightly taller, but they aren't really that rewarding to go to. The final thing about the outside is that it has a ton of water. Like Snowman's Land from Mario 64, the water here will hurt Mario if he's in it for too long. While this mechanic is okay enough, the water is just not used well in the kingdom, on the outside at least. I will say though that it's used in a pretty good and creative way in this sub area, however in the grand scheme of things, it's not used well in the main area which is what is important right now. It would have been much better if it was ice instead as I and I'm sure many others prefer running to swimming. There's also almost never a time where you would realistically be getting hurt from the cold water since there's always plenty of time to swim to each side of the lake. Having the water damage you just discourages players from using it or exploring it. Having the cold water with pretty much nothing in it throughout a lot of the outside once again helps this kingdom feel way smaller and more isolated with less areas to explore. Now that was the outside of the kingdom, so what about Shiveria Town itself? Well, I do think that it's better, but not by much. Like the outside, it's of course surrounded by walls, though here it obviously makes more sense since we're underground. This still makes it though to where there are very few areas inside of here to explore. Pretty much every moon in this main area is super obvious to find with maybe the only real exception being this one buried in the snow. With the moons all being laid out in pretty obvious spots, it makes this area less fun to explore. That was just the main room though, there are several other rooms here. This is basically a hub for a bunch of unrelated sub areas. In Mario Odyssey, sub areas are usually used to give Mario a more linear challenge. There are some exceptions of course, but that's their general purpose. I really love the idea of this as they basically add in mini levels inside of big levels. These rooms act as challenges after needing to explore to find them. However, these linear sub areas make up a lot of the Snow Kingdom. While I feel that when used every so often, sub areas are an amazing addition, if basically the whole kingdom is based around them, it makes it feel a bit disappointing. It just makes each moon more obvious as it's not about finding them, but just getting through a section, which is generally not a great thing in a sandbox game. One thing that does help though is that most sub areas in the game also have a second moon that requires more exploration to collect them, which is another reason why I enjoy sub areas a good amount. This saves the Snow Kingdom from being completely boring and linear, which is good. Still though, this big emphasis on sub areas here is one of the main reasons that this kingdom doesn't feel as fun as the others for most people. It just has less places to explore and is more linear. So now that we've looked at the kingdom's size, general aesthetic, and design, all of which Snow is kind of weak in, let's go ahead and move on to the story and see if it gets any better there. 
If you don't know what I mean by story, these are basically the moons or missions required in order to get world peace. If the moon or moons have cutscenes attached to them, then they're pretty obviously a part of the kingdom's story. Shaveria's main story has four different moons and one multi-moon. This is actually the longest story of all the medium-sized kingdoms based on the number of moons it has, and it's even tied with some larger kingdoms for the same amount of moons, like Seaside for example. Before we get into the moons themselves though, Mario of course enters the kingdom and it's in the middle of a huge blizzard. Most of the kingdoms have scenery changes for their story and if I'm being honest, this is one of the lamest. It just once again makes this kingdom feel more isolated, however none of the story moons take place on the outside so we don't have to be here for long. Entering into Shiveria Town, we're told that Bowser blocked off the Shiverians access to the racetrack and stole their cake, and it's up to us to clear the four barriers. In order to do this, we have to go through four sub-areas and collect the four moons there. This is my first real problem with the story, it's based on sub-areas. There's no exploration really needed in order to complete this one's story. Additionally, all the rooms are closed off from each other, making the kingdom's different parts feel so unconnected. I mentioned that the story has the same amount of moons as Seaside, and their stories are actually pretty similar. There, Mario has to hit four switches in order to unblock the sparkling water, which angers Mola, I'm not even gonna try with his name, leading to a boss fight. The difference here, though, is that you have to explore the kingdom to find the switches. This requires using the Gushins, going into one sub-area, and climbing up a final section. The way it's done in Seaside is way better in my opinion, as it's much more fun to run through a whole kingdom in order to complete a story. Speaking of, the story is also really supposed to encourage further exploration. Taking sand as an example here, while there is a somewhat straightforward path to the moons, there are so many different landmarks on the way, like the town and the other moons in the ruins, that will attract the player over there to make the story more fun as you do other things on the side. Snow Kingdom fails at this in many ways. First off is of course the blizzard, which just restricts the player's view and discourages them from exploring the outside. The moons inside of Shiveria Town themselves are also pretty out of view for the player as they make their way to the main story rooms. That only really leaves the hidden moons inside the sub-areas, so at least there are a few moons off the beaten path here, but it's not really that great. But anyways, with all that said, what do I think about the five moons in the story themselves? First off, we have one in a room filled with poison where we have to use the Typhoo captures in order to blow off these spinies to get the moon. This one works really well as it shows off one of the kingdom's main captures and how it can be used to push things like blocks and enemies, so good first room here. Our second moon takes place in a room covered in slippery ice, and the player needs to platform around the room and cause these small icicles to fall onto the big icicle in order to let the player get the moon. This is significantly weaker than the first room as the platforming is a bit uninteresting and it kind of feels like an excuse to show off that Goombas don't slip on ice, even though this really doesn't come up again in this kingdom. Oh, and also you could just ignore the whole challenge by just doing this. That's honestly more fun than doing the room itself, gotta love Odyssey's platforming capabilities. Our third room here has Mario collecting moon shards with these guys who rise up from the ground. While you can't cheese it like the Goomba room, I still am not really a huge fan of it. Plus, not being able to cheese kind of also takes away fun from it. This doesn't really show off anything interesting or even anything that's going to come back up in the kingdom, unless you count moon shards. Finally, we have the fourth barrier, the boss fight with Rango. This is in my opinion the most forgettable boss in the entire game, right next to Madame Brutal in the Moon Kingdom. This is Snow's only boss fight and it's a repeat of one we already did in the late kingdom, but this time he's got not one, but two hats. Whoa. Seriously, this is just a disappointing boss as we don't really get any cooler creative ideas for this kingdom. Before you fight him though, you have to ride a bunch of these gust poles up and this is also pretty uninspired, but at least these poles are used in the kingdom more so it makes sense to show them off. After that, we finally get to enter the multi-moon for this kingdom. This is actually a pretty unique one as this requires you to capture the Shiverian Racer in order to participate in the Bound Bowl. This isn't done in any other kingdom of course, so this is a good amount of fun. You basically press the jump button in order to get large amounts of speed after boosting onto the ground or the wall. I know that some may not like this as it can sometimes feel out of your control where you go, but I still enjoy it's a good amount. It's fun to try and lower your time on it sometimes, so yeah, definitely a really good way to end the kingdom's main story for me. So as a whole, the Shiverian story is alright. The first barrier and the multi-moon are pretty good, however the other three barriers are all kind of underwhelming and honestly not that memorable. Still though, I think the biggest problem with the story is how little it does to encourage exploration. But the moons themselves aren't as bad, so I can't say I dislike this aspect as a whole. I think if they were to give this kingdom a real boss fight on top of the Bound Bowl, then this story would have been much better. One small nitpick before I move on though, I wish these rooms each had symbols or something above them to show which room they are. I always forget which is which, so if they replace these snowflakes with something unique for each room, I think I would have liked it better. That's not really a huge problem at all though, that's just a personal thing, but I think it could have been nice. 
Another major part of a kingdom is of course its captures. Every kingdom in the game has a few, and most have captures that are featured very prominently in that location. For example, Wooded has Uproots, Seaside has Gushins, Sand has Bullet Bills, and Metro has, um, letters? Snow is very similar to those, of course, as it has its own pool of captures as well. There are six different things you can capture in this kingdom. Three of them, Goombas, Lakitu, and Bonsai Bills, are barely used and aren't really exclusive to this kingdom as they're used very often in other kingdoms as well. Lakitu and Bonsai Bills are also literally only used to collect one moon. That leaves us with three more that I would consider the main captures of the Snow Kingdom. First we have of course the Shibarian Racer. He's used in four moons and I think he's used very well. Each of the moons he's used in feel very big and important. His movement is unique and if used well, they can be quite fun to control as he can move pretty fast. No problems here. The other two are where I start having issues, starting with the Cheap Cheap Snow Kingdom. Yes, that's its name. Quite possibly the lamest capture in the entire game. Its only difference from normal Cheap Cheeps is that it's purple and it swims in cold water. Wow. They could have just made them normal Cheap Cheeps and I don't think anyone would have cared. Not only that, but there's nothing really to do in the kingdom's water, so the very few moons this capture does have are all pretty lame. There are other captures similar to each other in the game, like the two piranha plants, but even then they make much more sense to be different than the two cheap cheeps. At least controlling it works well, but there's just not much to this thing, and it's quite boring. I guess it's kind of fun to flop up this hill for one moon, but then again, it's nothing special. The final capture is what I would consider the Snow Kingdom's main one, the Typhoon. These will basically hover around and blow strong gusts of wind in order to push things. I think the idea is solid enough, and they do use it well in some areas. The first barrier from the story is one example, but I also really liked this puzzle with them later on in the kingdom. The main problem with the Typhoon, though, is their movement. They move so incredibly slowly. This makes capturing them more tedious than it is fun. You also come to a complete stop when you want to blow things, which is also pretty tedious as well. To explain why I really don't like this about the Typhoon, let's take a look at the Gushin. Obviously, these are both captures, however, the reason that the Gushins are much more liked is because they provide a fun way to move across the kingdom. It never feels like a chore to capture a Gushin, and it's even fun to use them when you don't need to. This is because it moves at a good speed and also has some fun abilities with its water. I've never found myself wanting to capture a Typhoon, though, and the only times I ever will is if I need it to push something for me. They also like to place quite a few moves that require the Typhoons a good distance away from the nearest one, so you have to slowly make your way across the kingdom in order to reach it. In closed off areas, I think this can work decently, however in the more open outside areas, I think this kind of fails. So in the end, three captures are used in other places, the Shibarian Racer is pretty great, the Typhoon is just okay since it has some problems but can be used decently, and the Frozen Cheap Cheap is among the worst in the game. After looking at this list, it's really no surprise that the Bound Moles are the best moons of the kingdom, as they're the only ones that use the kingdom's best capture. With nothing else really interesting here, it makes playing through Shibaria much less enjoyable and sort of generic. Alright, the final thing I wanted to talk about were the moons contained in this kingdom. Obviously not all of them, but just a few notable ones. I believe that this kingdom contains the hardest moon in the entire game, being the Iceburn Snow Class S Circuit. This again uses the Shibarian Racer capture, so I do find this one to be decently enjoyable. It is very difficult though, and it's sometimes hard to make the Shibarian Racer do exactly what you want it to do. Still though, I think this and the other race moons are good. Speaking of the races though, we have the Koopa Free Running Moons, which puts Shibaria back into its blizzard state, which as I said, I'm not really a fan of, so I think this is one of the weaker free running sets. On top of that, you're mostly going through water, which makes this overall a really uninteresting Koopa Free Running Moon. The three moons hidden inside of the Shiveria town are all decent. I'd say the best one is the one that requires you to wall jump off these boxes, which is kind of fun. There's also one in a chest and in the snow, which aren't terribly interesting, but certainly aren't bad. The hidden moons in the main four sub-areas aren't bad, and I really like this one hidden in the Rango Room. Now on to some of the more problematic ones to me. There are three moon shard moons in this kingdom. That's a ton, and while I think moon shards are okay when used occasionally, this is too much. There's one in the story, of course, which we mentioned before, but also one in this 2D section, and one on the outside when the story is completed. I'd say bringing it down to just two would have helped a lot. Many of the other moons are just worse versions of things we've already seen. The Rabbits and Notes are super generic, and the Cap and Seek moon was always so annoying to me because for some reason I can never remember where on earth it is. So yeah, many of the other moons in this kingdom don't really stick out all that much for moons done better in earlier or later kingdoms. I do like this one though where the Shivarian gives you a moon for braving the cold weather in just boxers, that's a pretty funny one. So while there's nothing bad here, besides the Bound Bowls, there aren't that many standout moons. If you dislike the Bound Bowls, then you're sure to not like this kingdom, as it's pretty much the only standout thing it offers, aside from a few other small moons. So in conclusion, why do I think this kingdom is seen as so mediocre? 
Well, it's a medium-sized kingdom with a stale aesthetic that's already used in other Mario games. The kingdom itself is designed in a way that exploring it is put aside, which is not a good thing in sandbox games. The moons and captures within the kingdom are also generally on the lamer side of things. In the end, this all combines to make a kingdom that most of us agree is pretty mediocre at best. But anyways, what are your thoughts on this kingdom? Let me know in the comments. I would like to say again that this is considering Odyssey standards, which are extremely high. I think this is the best game ever made after all, so most of the levels here are also some of the best design. I still think Snow has a ton of fun aspects, and even things I haven't mentioned like the Shavarian's design I really like, and just moving around this kingdom with Mario's perfect movement is also fun as well. It just has a lot of things holding it back and the competition is quite strong. If you all enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I really enjoyed making this one, and I think it would be really fun to make a whole series analyzing the other kingdoms in Odyssey and maybe levels in other games as well, so let me know if you all want to see that. I'll only make this into a series though if it does well, so please keep that in mind. But anyways, try Bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.